welcome to our kitchen and uh, here I'm going to be making some cheese and uh, the, I'm going to explain briefly uh, each part of the process so the first thing I'm going to be doing is boiling the the milk the raw milk so uh, over here on the stove I'm going to show you uh, each individual component that I'm going to need for that because basically we have to boil it to pasteurize the milk and I will explain a little bit about the process Here's something else that we are going to be needing, uh, an apron. So you put this on, okay, before you start handling the milk uh, to uh, basically, you know, meet uh, kitchen standards, at least my standards. And then also it's useful to have, you know, a, a, some kind of clean kitchen cloth that you can make into a triangle like that. All right, and drape it over your head just to keep your hair out of the cheese. Okay, not that I have that much of it, but uh, one hair is enough to ruin the cheese. So first thing we're going to need is, of course, the milk. And um, we have right here two gallons of raw goat milk. Uh, here I have my secret ingredient that I'm actually going to share with you because it's uh, it's important to have uh, vinegar, but I uh, don't use just any kind of vinegar. I use uh, wine vinegar and a measuring cup. Uh, we are going to need for each gallon of milk, we need a quarter cup. So we're going to need a half a cup measure. And you also are going to need a pot that is big enough to hold at least the two gallons. And we're going to be boiling it. Uh, slowly. Right, so to begin the pasteurization process uh, we need to put the milk in the pot obviously. So I'm going to start that and here's the first gallon. And then I move to the second gallon. There's a little bit of lag time. I'll just put the, the burner to the middle because I don't want it to uh, heat too fast. Okay. okay, so one of the things that you are also going to need, I forgot to tell you, is actually a long uh, wooden spoon. Uh, wooden spoon are better because uh, they actually uh, don't burn or scratch or do anything like that. So that's what we need and um, you can actually need to come back here and every five to ten minutes but no more than ten minutes stir it and um, stir uh, starting at the bottom so that the, the milk doesn't stick to the bottom and, and makes a, a nasty brown coat on the bottom and that ruins the taste of the cheese I have to share with you that one of the main issues of uh, using fresh milk is the part that it will uh, you know be spoiled if you leave it too long in fact I don't leave it more than two days uh, even in the refrigerator uh, just in case because um, you know the spoiled milk or old milk does not make good cheese so one of the things that I do as soon as I get the milk uh, from the farmers I freeze it that way I don't have to worry about wait waiting two or three days uh, later to actually uh, in fact it takes uh, almost two days to defrost it in the refrigerator so that's uh, one of the things that I uh, tend to do that way I don't have to rush on making the cheese the same day that I get the milk all right that's another tip so come back every five to ten minutes and stir starting the bottom so you use the the tip of the spoon to scrape the bottom make sure that it doesn't stick One other tool that you're going to need is a thermometer of some sort. I like to use this electronic thermometer because uh, you can actually measure um, the temperature in degrees centigrade or Fahrenheit. I choose to do it in centigrade. So uh, I talked about or mentioned at least before the process of pasteurization and the thing is that you have to have it uh, to about 63 degrees centigrade uh, for about 30 minutes and the way that I do the milk in 15 minutes at this uh, temperature that I have set here 
with this burner and this amount of milk in about 15 to 20 minutes I have reached that temperature and um, specifications uh, actually mention that you have to keep it at that temperature for at least 30 minutes okay so for the next 30 minutes meaning 45 to 50 minutes uh, uh, total after you pour the milk on the burner uh, it will reach about 98 degrees centigrade which is you know if you say uh, add two more degrees to that so it's uh, over 200 uh, what is that over, over 200 degrees Fahrenheit so I'm pretty sure that this milk in about 45 minutes from now is going to be completely pasteurized and ready to be making some great cheese uh, here's another tip I just came back the third time uh, after five minutes to stir the milk again again and again so um, do not leave the wooden spoon in the milk because you know well, it's for obvious reasons but the main reason is that you will not be able to put the lid on the pot if you leave the long spoon in there so it will uh, heat up a lot faster I'm told uh, if the top is on it okay okay uh, time for a temperature reading here it's 63 degrees centigrade actually it says 65 66 so it's gone past the temperature that we need to maintain for at least a half an hour uh, for the pasteurization process to take place and give it one more stir so the clock here says 8 uh, 14 so I intend to keep this until maybe a quarter to nine and uh, but I, I have to boil it really slow because my um, my goal is to reach uh, 98 degrees centigrade which is you know over 200 far Fahrenheit okay so anyway when it reaches uh, 98 degrees centigrade then I turn the stove off and I will add the vinegar uh, to separate the milk into curds and uh, next stop is well at least a half an hour from now uh, here we got according to the clock another 10 to 15 minutes we're gonna do a quick temperature check to see where we're at so turn the thing on make sure it's on degrees centigrade leave it there for a few seconds and it looks like 86 87 uh, 88 degrees 87.8 yeah almost 88 degrees all right so we got a little bit to go about 10 more degrees right so according to our clock here it's been at least uh, or, or about 30 minutes since we uh, reached the temperature of 63 degrees centigrade so now uh, we're going to uh, remember you have to actually use the wooden spoon to, to stir uh, especially the bottom uh, scraping the bottom with the tip of the spoon every five to ten minutes uh, but now we're going to uh, stir it just a little bit and then take a temperature reading to see where we're at and have to reach uh, 98 degrees centigrade before I turn the heat off and add the vinegar to the milk Taking the reading, all right, leave it there for a couple seconds. We got 95, 96 degrees. All right, so we got a couple more degrees to go. Cover it back up. Okay, so we have reached the critical stage. We only got another couple degrees and that can go pretty fast. You do want to have the vinegar already in the a measuring cup right here because uh, you want to add it as fast as possible when um, the temperature is reached 
So I'm just going to wait one more minute and then uh, measure the temperature again. Okay. Here we go. 97, 98 degrees. Okay, so now it's time to turn the heat off. Turn the stove off and I normally remove it from the heat, direct heat, so that it has a little bit of cooling faster. And now um, I think you can still see the pot here. I'll make sure that the camera is pointed at it. And what I'm going to do now is add the half a cup, remember one quarter cup for each gallon, and just pour it down. And now you have to make sure that you stir really well so that the vinegar gets to all the milk throughout. So you stir for about maybe one or two minutes at the most. And if I put the camera a little closer, you can start seeing that the curds begin to form already. All right, so now at this point, what we have to do is basically let the um, process of cooling take some time, uh, 45 to minutes to one hour. So I'm just going to cover the pot and let it sit there for about an hour. Uh, you will need a colander. I, I like to use this uh, heavy stainless steel uh, colander to filter the curds. And um, in preparation for the curds and the way that it's going to come out, uh, what you may want to do, and in fact um, I recommend that you do, use a, a tub. Uh, large enough to hold all the whey so that um, in case that you want to use the whey um, at the end and you don't throw it away down the sink or waste it uh, then you can use it you just put the colander in the tub and that way when it's filtered the the curds the whey gets to be kept and then you can use it for whatever reason you want to later on Okay, here we are about an hour later. The curds and the whey are still in the pot, quite hot, still not quite as hot because it's been cooling for an hour with the lid on to keep the debris from getting into it. But I'm going to place the camera over here so that it is right above uh, the sink where the colander and the basin that is going to to keep the the uh, whey from being drained down into the sink. All right, so you have to go real slow because you don't want to make a big mess. And remember, there is two there, there are two gallons of raw. goat milk in here and it's just about filled uh, the tub down at the bottom so uh, we'll have to do something about that and that's about all the curds out of the pot all right so now all I have to do is lift it up a little bit let all the way Pull off in the top there and separate. And then this can actually go now into the refrigerator. You put it in a container, put it in the refrigerator and let it cool overnight. The curds will be ready to make cheese in the morning. Okay, so we here we are on the next day. And uh, I'm about to take some of the cheese out of the refrigerator, but I want to go over a few things. Uh, in addition to the head cap and, and uh, head cover and the uh, apron, uh, I recommend that you use uh, some uh, gloves, some latex or some other kind of hygienic uh, gloves before you 
handle any of the cheese. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and take the the curds out of the refrigerator, but then I'm going also want to go over some of the equipment that I'm going to be using. Okay, so over here I have the gloves and um, and here is the cheese press that I'm going to be using. This is my favorite cheese press. Um, it does come with, when you purchase it new, it comes with um, uh, some kind of vinyl uh, mesh bag. Uh, but um, today I'm going to be using uh, cheesecloth uh, for this purpose. So this will be the first time I use cheesecloth. Uh, so it does have a basket that you use. And uh, this is where you put the cheese curds, and I'm actually going to put the, the uh, cheesecloth before that. And then it goes inside the basket. And, the, uh, and then the, the, the main container here that receives all of the uh, whey that is being squeezed out has a spout for draining and a hose that goes uh, on that spout, like so. Okay, so I'll be putting that on. And then once you got all of that, you know, I'm going to be showing you this, but then you, know, you just basically turn the lever here and it squeezes the cheese. Here's the cheese curds out of the refrigerator. And um, today I'm going to be making plain cheese. And um, normally what I do with the cheese curds is I add uh, other ingredients, uh, such as, for example, the, the four flavors that I make are garlic herb, Craisins, hot chili peppers, and then plain. Today we're going to be making plain. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using uh, this plastic spoon because it has, um, it, it, you know, it has more capacity than the plain wooden spoon. And just place the. I'm going to go around the other side so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm placing the, the curds. They have been refrigerated since last night when we boiled uh, the milk, the raw milk, to pasteurize it. So now I'm going to put it on top of the cheesecloth that has been prepared. Okay. And this is basically the, the size of this doesn't have to be estimated because it comes out of uh, one gallon. So last night when we boiled the two gallons, uh, we're basically what you do is you um, portion and take, take half and half of the two gallons. So one gallon makes about a pound of cheese. And that's how much cheese uh, we have here. So now you wrap it, push it down a little bit, you wrap it, so that it doesn't fall off the sides, okay? And then now all we have to do is just put it in here and start turning this widget. So put the hose here just to make sure. So now we start turning it so that it begins to press down the cheese or the curds to squeeze out all the way. And uh, normally what happens here, what you want to do is just squeeze it until it becomes too hard to squeeze. You don't want to force it uh, or put too much strength on it because you may damage the equipment. But what you want to do is just basically press hard on it until it's tight and then uh, let it sit for at least a half an hour and then come back later and try to, you know, to turn it once or maybe even half a turn if that's all you get at the end. And you repeat this process for about two hours. Uh, I, I managed uh, to do it in, ma in a maximum of two and a half, uh, sometimes three hours at the most, but in about two hours uh, repeating this process uh, you pretty much have the, the cheese to the consistency that I like. I'm going to bring um, this to about yeah, that's about the pressure so now I can start to see the way coming out so if you look at the hose here it's actually uh, already coming out 
So, to let it come out more slowly, basically it's kind of tight right now. I'm not going to be able to uh, force it any more than that. So I'm just going to let it sit for 15, 20 minutes, but no more than a half an hour uh, before you come back. Uh, 15 minutes should be good uh, at first and then towards the end maybe a maximum of a half an hour uh, before you can come back and squeeze again. Here we are two hours later and you'll know when you have uh, squeezed everything because uh, it will be very difficult to turn um, the, the press here and go down any further and there is no more way coming out so um, that's when you know that uh, basically you have no further to go so what I'm going to do now is basically uh, get this baby out and again uh, we'll see how it works with the cheesecloth instead of the uh, vinyl uh, material that came with the press. And we'll just have to see how it goes. Alright, so we remove this and we'll remove this and there is the... well it looks good but now we'll have to take it apart and see if it holds together because that's the key. Now I'm going to put it on this uh, plate and eventually what I like to do is I, I store them in the refrigerator overnight and wrap it in some kind of clingy wrap but uh, uh, for you here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get it out it does have a nice uh, little thing that you can actually push the cheese out gently you, you cannot hurry this process because then you'll ruin it okay alright so now we're going to try to peel away this cheesecloth and it seems to be coming apart pretty well gently not to rush it okay and it seems to be working fine <coughs> 